Hi, I'm Susan Lloyd. Hi, I'm Linda Quinlan. And we're happy to have Susan standing in for Anne tonight, who tripped and fell and smashed her knee. So she's going to be home for a while. So, Keith. I, I'm Keith Ghostland, and I, I will be the support person as needed. <laughs> And welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, July 12th. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. So this is usually when Anne takes me to far and distant places and tries to depress me. I, I'm glad you said that, Keith, because our first story is quite depressing. So that was a good segue. Then we'll move right on to Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Mine are pretty depressing also. I thought I'd start with the depressing and then build up to something positive okay. to end on a positive note. How does that sound? Good. Okay, so our first story that Anne, uh, you know, from her bed told me to, to research, so I did, uh, is kind of a follow-up. So this is a story about an Islamic uh, Sharia court in Nigeria's northern state of Bar Uche, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, has sentenced three men to death by stoning after convicting them on charges of engaging in homosexuality, the leader of the religious police that arrested them said. So northern Nigeria is predominantly Muslim, and the states in the region use these courts to punish residents for crimes ranging from adultery to blasphemy. What I thought was interesting about this is that the men who were arrested admitted they confessed to the crime even though they weren't represented by lawyers, and the judge that sentenced them to death said that they could appeal the sentence within 30 days. What's also interesting is that any death penalty passed by the, the Sharia courts in Nigeria has to be approved by the state governor, and they have an interesting mixture of religious law and and constitutional, more constitutional type law. So in most parts of Africa, homosexuality is generally viewed as unacceptable. So they have a law that has lengthy prison terms for people convicted of public displays of same-sex relationships. And the ruling is also gonna shine a spotlight on the place that Islamic law has in a country whose constitution is actually neutral on religion. So last month, a Nigerian singer asked the appeals court to declare that, to declare that the Sharia pen, penal code is unconstitutional. And so a ruling is expected by October. So there's that. And you'll have to come back and report on I that. Will, I will have to come back with an update. And let's hope it's a good update, right? Let's hope there's something positive to say. Uh, so uh, also, uh, something a little bit more upbeat, a uh, Caribbean court uh, found recently uh, that... Uh, anti-sodomy laws were unconstitutional. Yay. Now, if that doesn't make us all want to get on a boat, I don't know what yeah. does. But uh, So in San Juan, the court ruled that a law in Antigua and Barbu Barbuda, is that different than Barbados? Barbuda? Is that a place? That criminalizes gay sex is unconstitutional. So that the, the court found that the selection of an intimate partner is a private and personal choice. And the ruling also said that the Twin Island Nation's 1995 Sexual Offenses Act offends the right to liberty, protection of the law, freedom of expression, protection of personal privacy, and protection from discrimination on the basis of sex. Another thing that I thought was interesting about this is there was a gay man who worked for Antigua's Ministry of Health, and he got together with a local group called Women Against Rape, and they partnered together to fight this law and the, asked that the law would be found unconstitutional. So the, ra the rarely used law states in part that two consenting adults found guilty of having anal sex would face 15 years in prison. And meanwhile, the anti-rape group said that their concern over breaches of confidentiality has prevented people in the LGBT community from coming forth seeking AIDS testing or treatment mm -hmm. because of this law. Mm -hmm. So it has this you know, it's sort of a double whammy that people then won't go get tested or won't get the help that they need. So some of these laws uh, used to be quite common in former British colonies across the Caribbean, but they've been challenged in recent years. So Belize and Trinidad and Tobago have found these laws unconstitutional, and there's a lot of other cases in the region that are still pending. So there's an Eastern Caribbean Alliance for Diversity, and they welcomed Tuesday's outcome 
which came in litigation that began in 2020 that, that uh, challenged invasive and unconstitutional remnants of colonial law. So the group said same-sex consensual intimacy is still criminalized, criminalized in several Caribbean nations. So. Yeah. I used to, you know, like Ann and I, 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 I decided that I wanted to go on a cruise for my 70th birthday. Nice. <laughs> and um, it was really hard for us, I mean, to stay in the country and not go to Europe it was really hard to find a cruise ship that did not go to the Caribbean because we did not want to give them any money or support. Right, or get arrested. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. Uh, yeah, where'd you end up going? We ended up going to Panama. All right. Which, you know. Hold on to that sodomy thought when I come up to, oh. my, la to my last story. Okay. okay. That's a good segue. Over to you, Linda. <laughs> All right. Well, a Texas judge blocks child abuse investigation into two families for gender-affirming care. We'll have more about that later. And um, there was a uh, press conference in Chicago where Brit Brittany uh, Griner's wife, and um, along with uh, Al Shopton, ask for her release. So I don't know, that doesn't look so good. Um, the Biden administration changes Florida's trailer park, charges Florida's trailer park with anti-trans discrimination. And we'll have more about that. Color in Colorado, a trans woman has a body cavity search. And we'll have more about that. No, hopefully we won't have more <coughs> I... of that, but okay. All right. But Ma you... Marjorie Taylor Greene, our favorite person, oh, geez. says the July 4th shooting was designed to ruin Mega Month. Oh. Bisexual daughter cuts ties with her dad, who is a state senator, and he has been part of the effort to end abortion. Her father is Iowa Senator Adrian Dickey. Uh, she added to her statement that he was also abusive. Good cool. name, though. Dickie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I'm Moving not, on. <laughs> I'm not going to support my father, Mr. Dickey. Hmm. <clears throat> Patrice Culler calls for resistance um, and not corporate pride events. And as we know, she's the queer co-founder of Black Lives Matter. And she cautions to get cutting up in the commercialization of pride. She wants people to join larger resistance groups across the country. And I think that's a great idea. Ohio welcomes Mike Pence with a queer dance party. The anti-gay vice president had some nerve going to Ohio Capitol during its pride celebration. He was there to promote Trump's tax cuts. And uh, we all love, and I know, uh, Karine Jean Pierre, hmm. press conference secretary for Biden. And she got really kind of irritated with this, re um, this uh, reporter who kept cast asking her the same questions over and over again. And the question was about the protest at the restaurant where Kavanaugh oh, yeah. was having dinner. So she threw up her hands and said, I'm done here. So <laughs> Was this the same reporter like her. from Fox that used to give Jen Psaki such a hard time? I don't time know. They didn't coming. give the name, but oh, okay. you know, I'm done. So uh, <clears throat> a Wisconsin man is accused of brutal LGBT hate crime. We'll stand trial. We're on that. Gay Missouri teen was shot eight times because he was gay. He was shot three times in the chest, three times in his right arm, once in his buttock. Amazingly, he survived this. Wow. And it will probably have a very um, long, painful recovery, but, but the perpetrator was caught, so we'll have more about that at some point. Michigan Republican gubernatorial candidate wants marriage equality overturned. Ryan Kelly and Tudor Dixon said the Supreme Court ought to revisit the 200, 2015 ruling that provided all Americans with marriage equality. So, you go, Michigan. 
A DC man convicted in a gay love triangle. <coughs> Murder seeks a new trial. He says he was failed in adequate defense. Uh, gay liberation candidate wins in DC as a write-in candidate. It's kind of really interesting. Bruce Major has won the Democratic seat to be the DC delegate to Congress. And he was a write-in candidate. That's pretty good. So there's hope for us. I know. Huh? We could be writing well, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Soccer star Megan Rapino mm -hmm. is awarded the President's Medal of Honor. And a gay candidate is banned. Uh, a gay candidate's banner is defaced with anti gay slurs. So we'll have more about that. So let's see. And then we have uh, LGB mat uh, Marine veteran is fighting in Ukraine. Eddie Etney uh, says the suffering of the Ukrainian people compelled him to sign up and fight. And a mass senior-friendly housing project in Hyde Park area was targeted by vandals. She stole my story. Uh-oh. There was threatening graffiti. The message was done with black spray paint on the security fence surrounding the building. There have been no arrests to this date. You can, you can if add, you have more about that, you can I was going to say, you can add your color... I don't. Commentary. No, That's no, no. I, I have the photographs oh. to go with. Okay, oh. good. Okay. Let's go Hawaii on. Museum revisits their history of gender fluid healers. In the Hawaiian culture, maho refers to someone with a male and female spirit and a mixture of gender traits. I didn't know. Hmm? Uh, let's see. This is more of a story for later. Uh, oh. This is kind of interesting, and um, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, as we know, fled. Uh, <laughs> Morton's. <laughs> Snuck out the back door. Yeah, didn't he? with Through a the security kitchen. detail. Yeah. Abortion rights protesters outside a restaurant. Well, you know, we heard that. But Chase and Buttigieg and his husband, uh, Pete, had to sort of defend him. But anyway, uh, shared his viewpoints via Twitter on Friday. Leading the secretary, Pete Buttigieg, defending his husband's words on Fox News. <laughs> and he said, sounds like he just wanted some privacy to make his own dining decisions. Um, alluding to Kavanaugh's recent vote to overturn Roe versus Wade, the 1973 court decision that had guaranteed abortion access based on Americans' right to privacy. I think he just wanted a beer, isn't that? Yeah. <laughs> he can he, we... uh, Okay. <laughs> I'm not going there and you can't make <laughs> me. So, <laughs> this week's trivia question, and mm. took a little while, but they got there. Mm. Front page of Out in the Mountains, July 1993, article talking about a Vermont Supreme Court decision that just set a U.S. precedent. I got it. <laughs> what was it? Okay, so... You're such a tease, Keith. Oh, well, there we are. <coughs> so, get out your calendars. We've got events. Starting with Thursday, July 21st, starting at 7 p.m. at the Lake Maury Inn in Fairley. Mm -hmm. There'll be a cover for this. When I Woke, 25th anniversary tour, Uprooted Band with Michael Gabacek of Rusted Root. Ooh. And the reason it's on our list is the $40 entrance fee is to the benefit of the Pride Center of Vermont. Nice. Now, but that's just the beginning of your week, mm. because starting Saturday, July 23rd, and running through Saturday, July 30th, in White River Junction, for your Pride Entertainment. Still Pride? They, well, they had delayed theirs until the end of July, so they weren't competing with okay. everybody else. Mm. I mean, they had put out the Save the Day many months ago, mm. and we've been reporting on it. All of the events are at the Main Street Museum, which by interest is at 58 Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. So there we are. Mm -hmm. So on Saturday, the 23rd, at 8 p.m., is the Pride Glow Dance Party. Mm -hmm. 
their theme for their entire events is let your pride glow. Mm. So, and then on Tuesday, the 26th at 7.30 p.m. is the big gay movie night. And if you want to know what the movie is, you've got to show up at the museum oh. because they're not announcing it in advance. Hmm. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., and this would be of interest to you, is the LGBTQIA plus book panel. Oh. Authors, critiques. On Thursday at 7 p.m. is the Rainbow Trivia with Sergeant George. Huh. Might have to go just to find out who Sergeant George is. And to win. It, we could do that. Yeah. On Friday at 7 p.m. is Queer Oki. Oh, I love that. Yeah. No, that's dangerous. Uh, it's yeah, really... Yeah, yeah, run from the room. <laughs> On Saturday, starting at 11 o'clock, is the lineup behind the museum. Then there's the parade. And then following the parade, back at the museum there's going to be their After Pride Festival, which is the vendors and organizations and everyone out you know, sharing who they are, what they can offer the community, and a chance to spend your hard-earned money. Mm. Well, I so, want to know what the trivia prize is, if there's any. I don't, I, <laughs> we'll have to find out. But, uh. al but also on Saturday the 30th, <clears throat> In the evening, starting at 8 o'clock, this was Babe's Black Meadow Gallery and Tattoo collaboration for the Dark Wave Dance Party. Oh. There is no cover. So Basic black is encouraged. So we've gone from glow to black. To black. Wait till you see the poster that Zach's oh. putting up. <laughs> that ought to okay. get your interest. Right. Um, out in the open in Brattleboro, the <coughs> Rural Summits are back this year. Oh, huh. They are holding one Sunday, August 21st, at the Dandy Ram Farm in Monroe, Maine. Are we going? I thought we'd wait until Road Friday, trip. October 14th to Sunday, October 16th in Halifax, Vermont. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now, you've gone in the past. Yeah. So, outright, they're currently doing their back-to-back -back camp outright. So, the offices are closed for that, but then they're going to be closed for an additional two weeks. So they won't be back in the offices until August 1st so that they can, you know, do staff development, retreats, regeneration, you know, what is our vision? What did we just learn from our campers? What does it mean for the work we're doing? But save the date because on Saturday, October 1st is the fire truck pull. Mm. And if you've never been to it, it is the most hysterical thing you've ever seen. It is Burlington's fire trucks on Church Street. You get a team of people together, and it's attached to a tow rope. How fast can you pull it up the street? I think that's dangerous for me. I was thinking more like sitting I, at Halverson's and watching this. I, I can hear <laughs> Zach laughing in the booth. Um, and, and one of the things for us to keep in mind are, you know, there are ongoing events that are being sponsored by our LGBTQ plus organizations and networks, such as Rainbow Umbrella with the Women's Discussion Group book and group. the Book Discussion Group, the collaboration with the Pride Center. Which doing Susan is in. The Book the Discussion book group. group? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the Momentum Coffee and Conversation, which happens once a month here in Montpelier, once a month in Burlington. But there are more organizations such as Babes, Out in the Open, Pride Center, that are sponsoring recovery groups mm. specifically targeted for our communities. Mm. And keep in mind, Queer Connect, the Sapphic Story Hour, their focus right now is on reader and writer roundtables. You share your poetry, we get to give you feedback on how it impacted us. Mm. Um, in that same vein, Pride Center Vermont is doing the rooftop writing group, mm -hmm. the Gen Genre Open. Oh, yeah. And I gay keep looking that up. Gay volleyball. Oh. I remember it from when they first started it 30 something years ago. Yep, there we are. And we have <coughs> Out in the Open still doing their radio hour and social tinkering. Mm -hmm. Remember, they are now doing the Crystal Queer 
podcast. And you can get a link to it by going on to the Social Tinkering Facebook page. That's, so a, get, lo that's a lot. Is there I, any queer theater? Uh, I'm in a show that's not until the fall, but yeah. there are some uh, gay characters in the play. So All right. Can, we'll be waiting for the update. I can tell you more and, about that. Yeah. Can, and, and it is back to you. It is back to me. Okay. Let's see if I can find something a little more uplifting. Okay, here we go. So uplifting? This, she uplifting. promised us. I did All promise, right. so now I feel, hmm. Let's start with this. <laughs> uh, uh, Slovenia. Yeah, uh -huh. so Anne said she's been following this. Uh, Slovenia's constitutional court legalizes marriage for all. Wow. It's very exciting. Uh, because discrimination is forbidden under the Constitution, same-sex couples in Slovenia are now equal to heterosexual couples. The Supreme Court ruled the judgment applies with immediate effect. Who would the, think? The Court of Slovenia put same-sex couples on an equal footing with hetero couples. Unequal treatment in marriage and adoption is incompatible with the Constitution's prohibition wow. of discrimination. The Supreme judges determined in two judgments about which they informed the public for the first time on Friday. The verdicts had already been handed down on June 16th. Parliament now has six months to amend the applicable laws accordingly. However, the judgments made should already be implemented. That, this means that in Slovenia, same-sex couples can now marry and under the same conditions that apply to heterosexual couples, adopt children. So there's That's your next amazing. vacation. Yeah. There's our next vacation. There yeah, it is. Slovenia, who knew? Right. Where is it? You want I mean, more, you know, you want more children. children? No, just just to visit because, because it's gay, LGBTQ exactly, friendly. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, if that doesn't get you up and packing, this might. Uh, in Madrid. Oh yeah. I've always wanted to go to Madrid. It's, it's a beautiful city. Yes. Been there, Keith? Hmm? No. I like Barcelona too. But anyway, Spain's yeah. cabinet approved on Monday a new draft of an LGBTQ rights bill that, if backed by parliament, will allow people as young as 16 to change their gender freely oh. and those as young as 12 to do so with a judge's authorization. Oh. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. This version of the bill is very similar to the one that was initially presented by the government uh, a year ago but was held up due to debates within Spain's left-wing ruling mm. coalition. That's interesting. The bill was promoted by a left-wing United We Can party. Uh, there, was, there was some debate, uh, but they wanted to send a clear message that the lives of LGBTQ persons matter. Uh, so let's see. If it's approved, all Spanish nationals will be able to change their gender and name by simply stating their desire to do so twice within a period of four months. Previously, applicants needed a diagnosis by several doctors mm -hmm. of gender dysphoria, which yep. is the psychological condition of feeling a mismatch between one's biological sex and gender identity. So if you're 14 to 16, you can apply for these changes with parental permission. And one change is the inclusion for the right for non-Spaniards residing in Spain. I like that. Oh. So see, we could visit. We yeah. could have an epiphany yeah. and decide we need to change who we are, move to Spain. That um, the left is not always so good on our issues. Mm. They, there's a bit of a blind yeah, spot. It's, and particularly it's where it comes to recognition of our <clears throat> transgender communities. It's interesting to me that they, oh. would, they would be the holdup. Well, but also one of the things that you need to dive a little deeper in when particularly you're talking about European political parties that may say it's the Liberal Party or the Conservative Party, but from our perception, it's the reverse. Exactly. So yeah. they're saying left, but to them, the left we might view as being the alt-right. Mm. So, mm. so hey. Madrid's Pride Week begins on Friday. So there's, right. see, there's still time. We could get Where on a plane go? or a boat. Yeah. Um, there was this huge feminist demonstration in Barcelona. Mm. Um, and they, you know, a lot of these European countries are so far ahead of us in terms of. Right. Yeah. And some aren't. It's really. I know. It's quite a continuum. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm going to have a lot of depressing stories. And I don't think I'm going to end up with a good one. But, you know, <laughs> um, anyway, you know, like there's more good news in, in the world besides the United States than there is here, probably. The Biden administration charges Florida trailer park with anti-trans discrimination. 
The trailer park owner allegedly demanded that the transgender woman present as male to avoid being evicted from her mobile home. No one should have to change how they express their gender identity to, to maintain housing. Setting restrictions like this is not only unacceptable, it's illegal, said the spokesman for the government. She filed a complaint with HUD, alleging the park violated the Fair Housing Act. The landlord responded to the complaint, telling HUD the woman is not free to engage with other tenants about her clothing or transition, and claimed her transi transition is disruptive to the community. So, she's since moved. I can't imagine why. <laughs> In Colorado, a trans woman has a body cavity search at the hands of <laughs> the... He said he didn't want to hear about this again. <laughs> but this is the whole story now. <laughs> he just had the teaser before. This is the whole What did they story. find is what I want to know in her body cavity. <sighs> the El Paso Sheriff's Office. When she was arrested at a, Joy, a George Floyd demonstration, Juniper McGinn requested a female deputy search her but was denied. The female, the female deputy searched her top half while the male searched her bottom half. When McGinn was made to take a shower, five male deputies laughed and watched. So, um, Texas. Will, will there be charges? Well, I, she's suing, so mm. who it's knows? It'll... It's Texas. Yeah. A Wisconsin man accused of a brutal, brutal LBGTQ hate crime will stand trial in February in Wisconsin, and a judge re rejected a plea bargain the man had reached with prosecutors. I don't know how common that is, but Shane Nolan is accused of throwing a queer woman, uh, Jacenary Cross, into a live fire and attempting to strangle her. What? He was working as a prison guard at the time. Judge Ross said that accepting a plea agreement would go against public interest and would present safety concerns for the LGBT community. So, I don't know, how often do they turn down plea bargains? I don't know. It's, it's not that common an occurrence. Yeah, I don't think hmm. it would be. Hmm. A gay candidate's Banner is to face with anti-gay slurs. Uh, Justin Horn is running for Jackson, Jackson County uh, District, and if he wins, he would be the first black rep in the district, and this is in Kansas City. Um, and do you remember Seth MacFarlane and the whole controversy about um, an episode in Family Guy? Um, it was an episode featuring a trans character hmm. in the show. Quagmire's dad viewers were introduced to Ida Davis, a trans character and a Vietnam War hero, and was voiced by McFarlane. Ida had sex with Brian Griffin, who is later finds that he is disgusted to learn he slept with a trans woman. Even today, 12 years later, McFarlane says he wouldn't change a thing. So, and um, maybe this is well, kind of an upbeat last story, but we'll see. <laughs> You're bumming me out, man. <laughs> I know. And you thought Nigeria was bad. I know. Damn. I know. How bring you back like the, to live in the United States. <laughs> bring back the stoning in the public square. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> you've read my... No, That's no. next. <laughs> the congressman from New York's Hudson Valley is eyeing the midterms as a time of unrest over reproductive freedom and mass shooting and right-wing attacks on LGBTQ people. If anyone stands between Republican House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy being appointed as Speaker, it's Sean Patrick Moine, Moine, Maloney. Maloney, a 56-year-old gay congressman from New York's Hudson Valley, cheers the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and is asked with keeping Nancy Pelosi and other Democrats 
as Speaker of the House and second in line to the presidency. The pressure on Maloney, on Maloney is intense as the GOP members of the House speak, seek to thwart President Joe Biden's already imperiled agenda. And if that party gains a majority, it would only become worse. Then there are politically motivated investigations and potential sham impeachment proceedings that a Republican majority could undertake. Where's the upbeat part? I know. The <laughs> Democrats are already operating with just a slim advantage, <laughs> meaning a loss of a dozen or so seats could cost them half of the Congress. Inflation, gun violence, the environment, and potential war with Russia at the top of American minds. But for LGBT clue plus voters, their marriages, educations, and job opportunities are directly on the line. Maloney warns, look only to the conservative Supreme Court throwing away 50 years of precedent by overturning Roe versus Wade to see where the GOP will lead us, he said, ahead of ruling to overturn it that came down on June 24th. So wasn't that upbeat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an overnight bag packed, and I'm, I'm ready to Canada? go at a moment's notice. Madrid. Madrid, I, that's right. We're going to Madrid. No, it's those Slovenia. relatives. The, the relatives. Yes. Nah, the relatives in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. There you go. Anne always does Poland, because Poland. <laughs> oh, we were. There's this running thing with Poland, because, you know, they're terrible. Yeah. Gay-free zones. Oh, yes. They don't stone you necessarily, but I think you. Pretty close. Yeah, they get yeah. a lot of prison time, I think, and. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to start with my usual pitch. Get off your ass, get out and vote. The primary is Tuesday, August 9th. We have a number of out candidates that are running for the U.S. Senate, running against Peter Welch in the Democratic race, <coughs> is Isaac Evans Franz, an openly gay man. We have Brenda Siegel who is the Democratic candidate for governor who identifies as bisexual running against Phil Scott and really would like to debate him about his inaction in responding to the addiction crisis hmm. here in the state of Vermont. We also have Michael Pichak, who is running for treasurer, who is endorsed by uh, Beth Pierce, the outgoing treasurer. And then we have Becca Ballant, who is running for U.S. Congress. Becca set you know, Vermont history by being the first woman and the first out LGBTQ plus leader in the legislature when she became president pro tem. However, there's been some interesting things happening of late. First is looking at, oh, maybe some unexpected endorsements. Becca is a person of deep integrity. She is the kind of person we need in Congress. That's why I'm proud to endorse Becca today and look forward to serving with her in Washington, to which Becca responded. I feel like the work I've done here in Vermont supporting working families is something that Bernie noticed. I saw oh, that. was so exciting. Stuff that he really cares about. He's somebody that has deep moral clarity. So the fact that he felt like the message of our campaign was really resonating with him is just, it actually makes me kind of teary. Yeah. Mm. Nice. The other unexpected was we love Vermont and we care deeply about the future of this beautiful state. With so many challenges ahead of us, now is the time to elect courageous leaders who will stand for the rights of all Vermonters. That's why we're proud to put our support behind Becca's campaign for Congress. We love Vermont where we founded Ben and Jerry's yeah. 44 years ago. So I, I'm wondering if we get, if they will bring back the Cherry Garcia and start passing I it out at rallies. That. Or Chunky Monkey. Mm. Following up on the story that Linda started about the Pride House in the Hyde Park region of Boston. They responded immediately 
and said, okay, we're not going to tolerate this. And a lot of the graffiti included the use of faggot mm -hmm. just for the impact. They organized a rally, mm -hmm. and they had people showing up. The community it was really supportive. They came... Well, not only the end with signs, we will not let bullies and cowards stop our work to create safe and welcoming affordable housing for our LGBTQ elders. They were holding signs, Boston stands united against hate. Being gay is not a choice. Hate is. Love is love. And maybe one of the people holding those signs was Mayor Michelle Wu. So good going. Isn't the governor, a lesbian is running for the governor of Massachusetts. The, yeah, Laura um, Haley, who is yeah. an out lesbian attorney general, right. is running for governor and has been endorsed by numerous. Following up on this, you know, our thinking that we've created a safe environment, safe places for ourselves, our communities. I was part of a webinar with Sage Main last week. And we were Zoom bombed wow. in a Nyat friendly way. And they scrambled to really shut it down. And what it made us all talk about afterwards, and this is the, the elders community, is I thought we were past this. Mm. I thought we were able to create safe spaces. And it just reinforces how strong that hate rhetoric has become and the targets that we are now. And following up on that, Massachusetts Senate, they just passed a bill, and I can't, I can't even believe I'm having to say this, to repeal their sodomy laws. I mean, so when you were talking about, you know, here's the Caribbean, and here they have these archaic laws, mm -hmm. I think what we lost track of was marriage equality, the Oberfeld decision, didn't get us everything. That over half of our states still have sodomy laws and DOMA statutes on the books. And if, as Clarence Thomas wants, they go back and look at those decisions, you know, Lawrence v. Texas, which um, struck down the sodomy laws, those laws are going to be back in effect. I mean, looking yeah. at what we've created here in Vermont is not the same process that had occurred in other states. So bat down the hatches, kids, because we got work to do. Well, and we need to vote. Yes. Exactly. And educate and, ourselves and get out there. And I think we've reported on this on previous shows, but I, after talking about you know sodomy laws, I needed, a, I needed an up, right? According to the latest U.S. Census, three New England states rank in the top 10 in the country with the most same-sex couple households. Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Maybe Connecticut. Vermont <laughs> ranks number one. Yes. Massachusetts, Maine. 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 I didn't think I that. Three other states in our region fared fairly well. Rhode Island comes in at 15, hmm. New Hampshire at 16, and Connecticut at 18. Huh. So in the top 20. We are becoming the homeland. <laughs> we are. Come to us. Leave Texas. Come to us. That's so the answer to the trivia question, and, and I'm hoping you might share your personal story after we sure. share the result. Sure. Like. Out in the Mountains, front page, July 1993, Vermont Supreme Court decision. This was a case that had been filed by a lesbian couple where the non-biological parent wanted to petition for recognition as a parent. And at first it was struck down at a lower court level. And the basis for striking it down was that based upon previous law in Vermont, it was based on the premise of could you or could you not get married. 
and there had already been a case out of Addison County with an unmarried couple being able to share custody. Our state Supreme Court, by unanimous decision, said, no, <clears throat> you are indeed the parent. You deserve to be recognized as such. And what was part of the precedent is the biological parent did not have to relinquish custody for the other parent to be recognized. So it, 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 it was a good day here in Vermont, and <laughs> it didn't just end there as you were sharing before our show started. Yeah, I was, I was sharing that I had a similar experience. My daughter was born in 1997, and we had uh, the fabulous uh, Susan Murray as our attorney. And we were petitioning, my partner wanted to adopt our daughter, and we thought this was madness that we have to apply to adopt our own child, you know, and I was the, bi so I was the biological mother, and, and we were supposed to do a home study and have people come in our home and measure our backyard and have a social worker come in, and we had to fill out a, a survey a kind of a thing where we had to say how we met and how long we'd been together and like what our hobbies were. It was very intrusive. And I kept thinking, man, I could have gone out to a bar. And, <laughs> and, and that person would have more of rights to this child than my partner of many, mm -hmm. many years. So we ended up uh, finding ourselves before Judge Belcher at the time in Montpelier, you know, the courthouse there right next to the post office. And we walked in, and he asked us if he could hold our daughter, who at the time was about three months old. And it was a very scary moment because we didn't know if he was going to leave the room with her or the, what was going to happen. And we, and we got her all dressed up pretty and girly-like, you know, a little pink sweater and bows and things. And we handed our child, you know. And he held her for what felt like forever and literally just sort of rubber-stamped our application. And we didn't have to do any of the home study or any of the things, which is what we were kind of there to petition and to say, you know, we shouldn't have to do any of this, you know. And he said, I want to meet you in my chambers and bring your forms. And Susan Murray had written some sort of scathing thing, like, how dare you make these women go through this? They're obviously in a relationship. So it was very similar to what you said. It reminded me of that. So it was, uh, go Vermont, you know. It was one Sorry. of those really happy moments that we sometimes forget about some of the rights we do have here in our little state, you know? I mean, one of the things that was so encouraged, felt encouraging to me with you sharing it is I love the story, having met the daughter in question. <laughs> yes, you did. But <laughs> it's, we had done legislative change about adoption reform and gradually piece by piece, but knowing that it really does have an impact on the infrastructure takes me back to when you drop the pebble, you, you have no idea how far the waves will go. But it also reinforces to me again how important elections are and really keeping track of who it is that's in office and the decisions that are being made because the work it took so that that could happen, our opposition could use to take that away from us. Yep. So with that, well, I have one more thing since we oh. have some time, right? Look exactly. Look at the time we have. Um, I'm planning on working on on a few events at um, for Rainbow Umbrella, which will events that will take place at the senior center. They have the space, the time, the energy, the equipment. You know. Anyway, I want to do a poetry reading in September, and there will be more on that later. I also would like to do an LBGT comedy uh, show, which I was <laughs> going to hit Susan up for um, yeah, help that's... with. And also, I'd like to do like a moth story hour um, like they do on NPR. That's my jam. Yeah. That's, that's my thing to do. Yeah, so yeah. we could work on that together. I, I think to, you've uh, signed her up for two mm -hmm. events. I know. I know. I'm feeling and, that. You know yeah. And have it be, you know, maybe every other week or once a month. And um, and just have people come in. It do doesn't have to be LGBTQ stories, but it would. We want it to be LGBTQ people telling stories, so, whatever they are. So you're seeing this as not a sort of in time event, but an ongoing. Yes. Oh, I like that. Yes, 
And, you know, um, I don't know if you remember, and I cannot remember her name, and I like her so much, the woman who did, um, she did it for years. Oh, her. She, what yep. trivia? Yes. I can't remember her name. Oh, you're talking about, um, oh. she has one name. Yeah, what's her name? I, oh. I can picture her yeah. in my head. It's going to come Tall to me later. Blonde. Yes, yes, she did Extempo. Extempo. She did Extempo. That's she what I, also did The World's Worst Song. Did you yeah, ever go to I that? I went to that. The, oh, my gosh, Keith. At the, Young at the old, girl, at get the, out yes, of my mind. At the old, the, bar, the old labor hall. Yeah. You, you, you sign up to sing the worst song that you are aware of. So they did like, you know, that Young convoy girl. from the 70s. Remember that stupid song, Rubber Ducky? Like all these really <laughs> dumb songs. And people get up and they win awards. And it's a I'm toilet. I'm going into trauma right now. Uh, it's a toilet seat is the prize. Yeah. <laughs> What was, oh, she was great. I'm going to think of her, her name later. because um, yeah. So that kind of event. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, after time, it'll gain momentum, and people will come, and they'll tell stories. And mm -hmm. so here. that's what I'd like to be working yeah. on. Lovejoy. Is that it? Lovejoy. Is that right? Yeah. Or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Fabulous person. Yeah. And yeah. So, so, yeah. Extempo. She also had a karaoke. So back to yeah. the, the, the gay -e or whatever. What was it? queer o queer 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 okay. We used to go yeah. to um, uh, in Plainfield. Um, Positive Pie had yeah, trivia. Yeah. Now that would be fun at the senior center because yes, you could get it? some old songs. You could get some disco hits from yeah. the seventies for the LGBT crowd. That's another. But thing But you could we also could do. do Frank Sinatra and some older stuff. Yeah. that would be super fun. I'm, I'm thinking doing yeah. it at the senior centers with our memory deficits. Who knows what lyrics we're going to well, come up with? You know, that's we one of those get... things. You might remember a song from the '50s, yeah. but not what you had for breakfast. It could, you know. It's just well, no, I, was, happen. Well, I, I was thinking that. <laughs> I was thinking you got a prize for your your lyrics with the closest <laughs> matching to what, what what it truly is. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's great. And you know, That's it good. doesn't have to be seniors either. I mean, even though we're using the senior center, we can be. It's more you know, of a community event. It's more of a community event to try to bring people LGBT together. LGBT community yeah. events. Yeah. You know, where there is a space. I love that. Yeah. And you know, they have microphones and they have all the stuff that you need. So. It seems like a perfect place to do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right. So, nice. All righty. Nice. So on that note, as you know, hmm. we resist.